Today we're going to review the Discover AS rack mount batteries and what makes them awesome. My name is Benjamin, I'm an application engineer here at NOS Solar Electric and I'm here to help you plug into solar. Here on the table we have a whole bunch of Discover Lithium products that we're going to look into in more depth. We're going to start here with the Discover AS rack mount battery. This is a standard server rack size. It's 100 amp hours, 51.2 volts, so 5.12 um, kilowatt hours. It comes in two different versions. There's the heated version for cold weather conditions where we want to keep the battery warm. And then there's the standard non-heated one for warmer applications where you don't need that heated feature. This battery here can handle a 1C charge and discharge, so a full 100 amps powering your inverter loads or charging from solar generator shore. Very awesome there. This battery has internal, very superior BMS Gen 4 from Discover. It's a contactor based, so it handles those surges. This battery can provide 200 amps of surge power to inverter, allowing us for to have a smaller battery bank, but still be able to power large loads. Here we have the battery breaker. It's 100 amp rated, so we have overcurrent for this particular battery. We have connections here, they're special. They're an Amphenol Radlock connector so you want to make sure you get the battery cables that fit that. Discover makes a stackable quick rack that the batteries fit into. You can have up to six batteries and one combiner box per stack and you can have a few stacks in each system. So we can have a total of six batteries to one bus bar. The bus bar is key in large systems where we need overcurrent protection for the bus bar going to the inverter system. The bus bars in the combiner box are 500 amp rated with two 250 amp breakers. You can have up to 32 batteries in a system equating to 160 kilowatt hours of capacity. For applications where you might need a smaller capacity or 12, 24 volts, or even 48 volts, Discover makes this Lithium Pro battery. It's smaller, it's 1.5 kilowatt hours per battery, 12 volts, 24, 48. It's the same BMS as the, the rack mount version Gen 4. It um, is watertight IP67, replaceable external fuse per battery allowing you to um, protect the batteries in case of an overcurrent issue. Um, watertight connectors, we have this special cable here for closed loop applications. Battery button to turn on and off each battery and also detects when you have a fault. Also a cool feature about these batteries are they all come with a heated internal module so you can use them in harsh environments, cold weather. It's great for those applications. Now let us go look at an actual system with these AES rack mount batteries installed. In this system, we have a unique, custom engineered battery solution. Behind this wall, we have Discover AES rack mounts, three batteries totaling about 15 kilowatt hours of battery capacity in closed loop communication with Victron. Let's take a look. We have three batteries, all paralleling with individual cables into this Lynx power end that then feeds the Victron system. Each of these batteries have a positive and negative using an Amphenol connector, a Radlock connector. Each of them have their own battery cables coming to the Lynx power end, paralleling them all before they go to the Victron system. All these batteries have a little communication cable paralleling the communication. That then goes to Link 2 that's right here. This Link 2 is giving us closed loop communication to Victron. Here we have the link to from Discover. This is the gateway that allows the batteries to talk to various different inverter systems. Just to name a few, Solark, Victron, Schneider, and way more. The link to provides various different information to the inverter system. It provides voltage, current, state of charge of the battery. It also oftentimes provides target charging voltage, 
charging current limits, discharging current limits, and any other errors that the inverter system needs to know. A few other cool features of the Link 2 include three programmable relays for generator start, dump loads, external heat air um, alarms. You can also use the Link 2 to, uh, to update the firmware and each of your batteries. So having one software on your computer simplifies installation and upkeep of your system. Closed loop with the Link 2 achieves faster charging. This is done by the batteries telling the inverter system how to charge, how fast to charge, and where to, what charge voltage to charge to. Discover says that you can charge using closed loop about 30 to 40% faster. The Link 2 from Discover is dynamically changing the target charge voltage sent to the chargers, allowing for a faster, more accurate charge of these batteries. This also helps mitigate wire voltage loss and resistance in the battery cabling system. Using this method, the charge controller can stay in bulk for a longer period of time, charging the batteries faster without the fear of over-voltaging the batteries. The opposite of closed loop is open loop. Open loop is configured by setting charging parameters in the charge controllers and also the inverters. They're very conservative to prevent over-voltaging in the battery. For systems in open loop, you have to have a battery monitor to understand where your batteries sit and state of charge and health of the battery. That's not always accurate. Using a Link 2, you're way accurate because we're pulling information from internal of the battery and providing that to the system for you to see and for the system to use. All right, we're gonna go now look at the Link Access program for the computer that allows us to integrate into the Link 2 to program the relay, to program what inverter system we're using and to update and check the battery information. We're gonna program this one for Victron. But before we do that, we're gonna to need to open it up and adjust some of the pins so that the communication goes on the right pins to Victron. We're gonna take our Phillips head screwdriver and we're gonna re remove the four Phillips screws. All right, now that we have all the screws removed, we can flip it back over and take the cover off. Here, we'll see the pins that we need to adjust and we're gonna to wanna to make sure it matches which ones we need, and this one's for Victron. So we're gonna move the pins around. Once you have all the pins set, we'll just reverse the steps, put the cover on, screw it together, and then we're done. And then we can go to the laptop, connect it, and software-wise, program it for Victron. All right, now that we've opened up the Link 2 and changed the pins to reflect the inverter system we're working with, we're gonna now program it using Link Access on the computer. So let's connect that to the computer using the provided communication cable. Okay, let's let that connect. We're using link access, and it's going to show up here. We're gonna to go to link, and here we see kind of an overview on how the link two is currently programmed. Um, we can see right here what firmware the link two is running. Um, the latest version is 1.7, so we're up to date, but let's say you weren't up to date. You could kind of select what firmware you wanted to and update that, but we're running the latest, so we don't need to worry about that. Here we see the CAN settings. This is where we're gonna go and select Victron. And we're gonna set the baud rate to 500. This allows us to use VE BMS in the Servo GX, allowing us to use VE CAN for charge controllers and other things like that. Okay, settings for CAN were up to date, updated. 
we um, can see kind of rapid shutdown um, for certain applications you can do that read the manual for more information on that discovers working on being able to kind of access this remotely with kind of ethernet connection that's not here yet so don't worry about those settings and here on the far right we have the relay settings the link 2 has three relays that can be used for various different applications like if you want to start your generator using the link 2 you can do that there's a state of charge kind of configuration we can use to turn off things when the batteries get low or get high um, there's cell and temperature voltages that we can also use. Today, we're gonna program re Relay 1 to be state of charge. And um, we're using state of charge here because we have a 48 volt to 12 volt DC to DC here in the rig, powering all the 12 volt loads. And we wanna turn off that DC to DC if the batteries get to kind of deplete level. So we're gonna go to Relay 1, go to state, state of charge triggers, and we want to activate the relay when the state of charge is greater than 15%. And we want to turn off the relay when the percentage of the batteries drops to 10, 10% and that will allow the 12 volt loads to kind of run until 10%. And then when the batteries get charged back up to 15%, the DC loads will turn on. This um, kind of encourages the system to allow it to charge before we start turning on loads and potentially discharge the batteries and kind of have an endless cycle of charging and shutting off loads and kind of we don't, we don't want that. All right, we're gonna save that settings. It's gonna take a moment, but that's the last thing we need to do here using the computer programming the link to.